Today in this video, we're going to be doing some civil FE exam review, and we're going to be focusing specifically on statics. So I do have a practice problem for you all today. So I want to go ahead and get straight into the content. So I'm going to minimize myself. And let's take a look at our practice problem. Um, our practice problem says find the moment of inertia and radius of gyration of the figure about its base. So um, first of all, um, I want to let you all know exactly what we're covering in static. So we're, today we're going to be focusing specifically on area moments of inertia. If you miss my video on centroid of area or anything, um, any of these other topics that are going to be covered on this exam, make sure you check out those videos and subscribe to the channel if you are studying for your FE and want to pass on your next try. All right, so uh, when I'm attacking this problem or looking at this problem, first thing I ask myself is, can I use the FE handbook? And I um, would say yes. So for a moment of inertia, I know that I have a shape here. And so to get the moment of inertia of this shape, I'm gonna need to use uh, formulas to do that, I don't know what radius of gyration is, but I'm going to navigate and see if I can find what it is and if there's a formula that I can use. So I'm just going to do a quick search and we'll do radius of gyration to start. Next. Uh, yeah, so look what comes up. Moment of inertia and radius of gyration. So moment of inertia, what formula will I need for that? Or the second moment of area is defined as, okay, squeeze some integrals. It's really defined as Ix or Iy, all right, and the moment of inertia of parallel axis theorem, uh, if we're taking a moment of a shape, basically what that means is if we're taking an area or we're taking the inertia, the moment of inertia of a shape that is not on the axis that we need, then we will need to uh, use this these formulas uh, that uses the moment of inertia parallel axis theorem, where we can take uh, our shape and find the distance that it is from the axis that we need, this dy or dx, depending on which moment of inertia that you're trying to find. And we can use it to still get the moment of inertia of our entire shape. So. Hopefully that makes sense, and if not, I will explain it through writing. So, uh, with this, looking for I, Ix or Iy. So, it says find the moment of inertia and radius of gyration. So, I feel like I feel clear about moment of inertia, radius of gyration. Okay, boom. The distance from a reference axis at which the area can be considered to be concentrated to produce the moment of inertia. The distance from a reference axis. Okay, so it's just a distance in my eyes. Um, and to know which one that we need to use, um, I believe, thought I saw the symbol somewhere. Maybe not, um, but I know that in this case, oh, uh, radius of charge, RP, RX, or RY, so uh, P is, I believe, the 
polar, so I know I won't need that one. Y is if we're taking or trying to find the moment of inertia about the Y axis, but this is asking about its base, so we know we're using the X axis, so I'm gonna pull RX. All right, so let's go ahead and start solving. I've been gibbering for five minutes, literally just trying to process this question. But how I want to break this up, last last little piece, uh, we we have our tables for different shapes. So if y'all can see, we're gonna be in this section and we have the inertia of a shape if it's already on our axis, which is IX. And we have a IXC if it's not on our axis. So when I'm looking at this shape, it has um, basically a cut in it. But I'm what I'm saying is I'm going to uh, use one big rectangle and then subtract out one other um, rectangle. Hopefully I said rectangle before. It's really late, so <laughs> don't mind me. Um, but let's get started. So what I mean by this is this. Need a my pen. I want it black. Let's see if it gives me black. Yep. All right. So basically, for my box, first rectangle is going to be there. It's going to be my big rectangle. Then I'm going to take the moment of inertia of and then what I'm going to do is I'll use red close that out and for my second box I'll just cut out oh well, that was pretty nice kind of screwed it up but you kind of get the point kind of hatched it in um, but that'll be my box that I subtract the inertia from to get my total inertia so flip between pins so what is the inertia the moment of inertia for my big box well that is just IX I X and that equals base so it's height cubed divided by three. Okay, which equals what's my base? Six, it's my height, 10. And we'll do that divided by three. All right, so what does that give me? And keep in mind that this um, so I get two thousand inches 
to the fourth for my black box. All right, and now for my red box. Well, my red box, first of all, this is really, really important. My um, red box, it is not on my my base or my my x axis so i will need to use the parallel axis theorem that we talked about previously this ix is equal to ixc plus dy squared over i meant multiply it by a to get my inertia for this shape so Let's do it. So IX is equal to, well, what's IXC? Well, for this rectangle, IXC is equal to base times height cubed divided by 12. So I'll just say base times height cubed divided by 12. All right, and then plus dy squared times a. Okay, so what's my base? Well, my base is four. What's my height? My height is six. Okay, uh, divided by 12 plus, what is dy? All right, I'm glad you asked. So if you ever get confused about anything on this exam, be sure to use the use the FE handbook. Our dy is just the distance from the centroid of our shape to the axis. All right, dy, and this can be found in your handbook right up underneath the uh, moment of inertia parallel axis theorem. So. I know that we got to, if I know that this is six, right, then I know I have four left. So from here to here is four. So I know from here, from here to here is four. And then that's there, right? So what's in between this box? Well, it's three more up. So this total is seven. So the center that dy is gonna be seven. Then okay. what's my area? Should be 24, right? Six times four. Okay. So let's multiply all this out. Okay, so I get uh, 1,248 inches to the fourth. Okay, so we just want to now get our total, which our final inertia is just going to be what is this? 
is just going to be our big black box. Subtract it by our little red box. So 2000 minus 1248, which gives me a total of I get 752 for that. And this itches to the fourth. Okay. So now we just need to uh, get our radius of gyration. All right. Our x is equal to the square root of i x divided by a okay so what is uh, i x well we know that to be uh, 700 and 52 and then what is a all right so a is just gonna equal we'll do this we can do this on the side a is equal to well uh, six times ten all right and then minus Uh, four times six. So 60 minus 24, which is equal to 36. All right, so second square root of 752 divided by 36. So I'm getting 4.57, and I believe that is in, it's a distance, so inches. Yes. All right. So, I know that took a little while. Looks like we're about 17 minutes or so. So if you found this video helpful, be sure to um, leave a like, subscribe to the channel. Um, don't forget to check out uh, one resource that I have created, which is a um, study guide for you all. And it lists out a bunch of um, different things that you'll need. As far as it'll list out all the topics, it'll go through um, allowing you to write down uh, dates that you need to actually sit down and work on the specific topics. And you can check off, you know, when you're ready, if you're not ready, if you've practiced uh, more than enough, if you're able to solve the problems in less than three minutes. It has a lot of um, good stuff and it'll, it'll help you really stay organized. So again, hopefully this was helpful. Um, also for anyone who is looking to get some one-on-one -on -one help and you don't want to fail uh, three times or twice like I did, um, you feel free to book a call with me. Um, we can sit down, we can talk, and I can answer your questions and even see if you would be a good fit for um, my one-on-one -on -one, uh, FE program. So, uh, again, in our next video, we're going to be going through, um, what's next on our list? Static friction. So stay tuned for that. And I will see you all in the next video. Peace.